What's up everybody? Welcome to the stack. Welcome back. If you've been here before, I'm Neon Mushroom. That's Trigger. Boom! And then, oh, Aiden and Jake are back there behind the camera. You guys can't see them. And if you're watching our channel for the first time, you don't even know who they are. Today we've got another CDH slash Commander gameplay video. And a few quick notes before we can get into it. There are some errors in this video, none of which will change the outcome of the victor. And we cover all of them in the video. Just something to be on the lookout for. I'm assuming you're going to watch the whole video. You're going to see them anyway. Just keep that in mind. And then um, I think that's actually all of the things I had to tell you before the video. So let's go ahead and look at some opening hands, who kept those opening hands, and what commander those opening hands belong to, as well as some upkeep stuff. As always, if you like this show or any of our other shows on YouTube, liking, sharing, and subscribing helps us out immensely. If you like our content and don't mind that extra mile, you can always support us over on Patreon, over at patreon.com backslash MTG the stack. Yo, Calvin, say like behemoth. Like Behemoth, who is a genius. Don't think, just beat this. My sick lyrics. Wait. He's like a behemoth. I for. L listen. Yeet it! Comment down below any of your thoughts and feelings, and we hope you enjoy the show. Alright, first up we have Aiden on Perforos. He keeps a 7 card hand with Mirror Battlesphere, Mirror Propagator, Spawning Bed, and 4 basic mountains. And then we have me. I'll be playing my Kumena Tyrant of Orozka Merfolk Tribal deck. I also keep 7 cards with a Miro Commerce, Hole Breacher, Merkfiend Liege, a basic island, Breeding Pool, Cavern of Souls, and Novi Gen Heart of Progress. And then we have Jacob Duffy returning with his Verena Lich Queen build. He keeps a 7 card hand with Leyland of the Void, Bond of Insight, Command Tower, City of Brass, Basic Island, God the Shrine, and Alhamarit's Archive. And then we have Foley playing his Rafik of the Many Voltron build. He keeps a 7 card hand with a Holdout Settlement, Temple of Plenty, Rogue's Passage, Noble Hierarch, a Snow-Covered Forest, Fable Passage, and a Brainstorm. Oh, for, uh Oh, yeah! That's a ley line of the void, boys. <laughs> Pre-game actions are over. Aiden wins the die roll, so he's going to lead on Basic Mountain and pass the turn to me. I'll draw a card and just play Breeding Pool tapped, passing over to Jake. Jake's going to draw, play a God the Shrine tapped, and it'll pass to Ryan, who plays Temple of Plenty, scries to the bottom, and passes the turn right back to Aiden. He'll draw, deploy a second Basic Mountain, and pass the turn to me. I'll draw my card for turn. I'm going to play a Forest, and I'm going to tap up and play Kiora's Follower. Passing the turn back over to Jake, who on taps, draws his card, plays a basic island, has no further plays, and will move over to Foley's turn. He'll draw his card, copy Jake's basic island play, and he'll play Noble Hierarch. With nothing else, we'll pass back to Aiden for the third cycle of turns. He'll just drop a third basic mountain, play Mere Propagator, and then we'll go back to my turn. I'm going to on tap, draw, play a Cavern of Souls, naming Merfolk, obviously. I'll tap three and play my commander, Kumena, Tyrant of Oraska. I'm going to head into combat, and I'm going to pressure Foley just a little bit and attack him for two with my Kiro's Follower. And with nothing else, I'm going to try to pass the turn right back to Jake. After on tap upkeep and drawing his card for turn, Jake's going to deploy a Command Tower and then a Mana Crypt because someone always has to have that card. Then I'll deploy Alhamarit's Archive and try to pass the turn. Before I can, Ryan's going to tap for blue and cast Brainstorm. After drawing three and putting two back on top, we'll move right back over to Foley's turn. He's going to drop a Snow-Covered Forest as his land for turn, and then I'll tap all three lands and his Noble Hierarch to cast his commander, Rafik of the Many, and then I'll pass the turn back to Aiden, who plays his fourth Basic Mountain, taps four, and plays his commander, Perforos God of the Forge. After this, he'll get into the red zone and attack Jake for one, and pass the turn to me. I'll untap, draw, play a Basic Island as my land for turn, then I'm going to count out and tap two mana to play Miro Commerce, which will let me untap all my Merfolk at my end step. I'll then activate Kumena's second ability, tapping three Merfolk to draw a card, move to my end step, untap all my Merfolk, and pass the turn to Jake. Jake has a Mana Crypt trigger to resolve. He flips heads, which is good. That means he takes no damage. He'll draw and play City of Brass as his land for turn. Now he's going to tap for four mana and try to cast Ancient Excavation. I have a response. I'm going to tap three using that Cavern on Merfolk, and I'm going to cast Hull Breacher. Now he would draw three here, but instead he would draw six because of the archive. And my whole breacher sees all of this and I'm gonna make six treasure tokens and Jake will draw no cards. At that point, he's gonna try to end his turn, but I'll draw a card off Kumena and we'll pass over to Foley. 
he'll draw his card, and he will play a tapped Cathedral of War as his land for turn. Then he's going to tap for two and play Open the Armory. He's going to search his library for a copy of Black Blade Reforged and add that to hand. Having nothing else better to do with his mana, he'll then deploy the Black Blade Reforged and attack me for what we thought was 8 commander damage, but he actually has 3 exalted triggers, so it does wind up being 12. We'll actually fix that on the phone later in the game. With nothing else, he's going to try to pass the turn to Aiden, and it works. Aiden draws card for turn and plays first non-mountain land, Nykthos Shrine of Nyx. Then I'll tap for 4, casting Beetleback Chief. That Beetleback's going to have everybody taking 2 damage, and then the Beetleback's going to trigger, make 2 tokens, and everyone's going to take 4 more damage. Now just a quick little caveat here, you guys will notice that Jake's life total on the phone and Jake's life total represented up in the corner are off by one. This is because Ryan Foley, he misclicked on the phone and they're showing one difference. It does not affect the game, I just wanted to point that out because if any of you are anything like me, you're going insane right now seeing that the life totals on the phone do not match the life totals in the corners. Now Aiden's going to head into combat and he'll actually attack me with the Mere Propagator and pass the turn. So I'll untap, play Novi Gen, Heart of Progress is my land for turn, then I'll tap for 2 and play Master of the Pearl Trident. Then I would like to generate 3 mana using the Hero's Follower in conjunction with my lands to play Lull Mage Mentor. After this point I'd like to tap for 4 using some treasure to play Miro Harbinger. This will allow me to tutor a Merfolk to the top of my library. This time it's going to be the infamous Surge Banner. I'll put that on top of my library, then I'll tap 5 Merfolk that I control to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each of my Merfolk. And then once that's finished up we'll move to end step, trigger Miro Commerce to untap all of my Merfolk. And then we'll pass over to Jake's turn and the first thing he has to do is resolve the Mana Crypt trigger, which he does win, he takes no damage. He'll play a basic island as his land for turn, and then he'll tap out, losing a life to the City of Brass to play Black Sun Zenith. Now I do have a response to this, I'm going to crack two of my treasures and tap Kiora's Follower. In order to cast Inspiring Call, now this will give my creatures indestructible, which won't save them from Black Sun, but I will be able to draw six cards before the board weight resolves. I decide not to counter it with a Lull Mage Mentor, because I don't want to die to Rafik. After that point, I'll activate Kumana twice to draw two cards, and we will allow the Black Sun Zenith to resolve. With nothing else, Jake will shuffle that Black Sun Zenith back into his library, and will pass the turn back to Foley, who plays Temple Garden tapped, and then taps four lands to play Angelic Benediction, which has Exalted, and then he will pass the turn right back over to Aiden, who will untap play another basic mountain and then he's going to tap for two three mana and play Altar of the pantheon which increases his devotion to red by one on my turn i'm going to lead on basic island and we're going to do a little bit of ramping i'll tap two and cast farseek to get the only legal target i have left in my deck which is island no i do not own a tropical island at that point i'll tap two more to play talisman of curiosity and then we'll tap one using the cavern on merfolk to play enclave cryptologist after this we will pass the turn back to jake who this time will lose his mana crypt trigger take three draw a card, and tap 4 mana for Bond of Insight, which will have each of us exiling the top 4 cards of our library except for Jake because he has a ley line, and he'll get back the Ancient Excavation. After this, he'll tap the remaining mana, losing a life to play Ashnod's Altar. With nothing else, he's going to try to pass the turn over to Ryan, but first we actually catch the life total discrepancy from earlier and fix it. Ryan's going to lead on a basic forest, then I'll tap out and play his commander once again, Rafika the Many. After this point, he's just going to pass the turn right back to Aiden, who draws a card. Didn't expect this one. Dude, what the fuck did you draw? Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> just do it, you pussy. He'll play a basic mountain, and then he'll tap four to play Torbrain, Thane of Redfell. Now, just to clear up why he was so excited that he drew Torbrain, for any of you who have been following the channel for a little bit, you probably saw a game we uploaded with Torbrain as the commander, and this isn't our list. When we played that deck, it was actually supposed to be Perforos in the command zone. It was this very same deck, so we just thought it was kind of funny. This build makes a lot more sense as a Perforos deck. Upon entering, Torbrain and Perforos are going to see each other and everyone's going to take 4 damage. Then Aiden's going to cast Tent with Vengeance. Holy shit, do I have a response to that. <laughs> Sacrifice this. I'm going to cast Beast with targeting Torbrain. No. Now, I warned you guys there would be errors, so I'm going to explain this really quick. The beast with him resolves and he gets a beast. Then he makes the four tokens off of the tempt. Now, the big issue we're going to see here is that those tokens off of the tempt do not self-exile at the end of turn, but he thought that they did. So just so you know, at the end of his turn, he exiles the tokens where he should not have, and then the beast won't show up in the battlefield because he thought the token that I grabbed him was for the tokens, not the beast. He forgot that he got a beast, so we remind him at end step. So he does have the beast at end of turn, keep that in mind, but he won't have the tokens. That's kind of a big error. I don't think it changes the outcome of the game, but I figured this needed pointing out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah! Nobody else wanted to do this? No, fuck you. 
Wait, hang on. No, you don't. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. you. Sure? Don't you dare. Are you sure? <laughs> hang on, I might be able to kill him. Don't eat me! <laughs> no, I'm good, I'm good. I protected you. You, you, you absolutely did. Mm. Aiden will head into combat and attack Foley for four. Foley will block one of these tokens and take a grand total of three, and then I'll exile the tokens and pass the turn. Good. Yeah. On tap. Here we go. Shouldn't have let me live, idiot. Draw. I tried. I'll copy Aiden and play Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, and then I'm gonna tap for four mana and I'm gonna play Surge Banner. Then I'll activate my Nykthos, and that's gonna make me four blue mana. And after I've made that four blue mana, I'm going to do some deliberating, realize I don't have a lot of outs here. I'm going to use all of that mana in conjunction with the green from the breeding pool and play my commander, Kumena, Tyrant of Veraska. Then I'll use Kumena's second ability, tapping three more folk to draw a card, move to end step, untap them with the commerce, and we'll pass to Jake's turn. Jake is going to win his mana crypt trigger, taking no damage. He'll draw a card, then he's going to tap for some mana, and he will play that ancient excavation. Now, the Alhamarit Archive is going to see him drawing these cards, so he's going to draw twice as many cards as he normally would, and after doing so, he does have to discard four cards. At that point, he's going to play Hall of Heliod Generosity as his land for turn, and then he's going to tap for four mana, losing a life to the City of Brass, and then he'll cast his commander, Verena, and pass the turn back to Foley. Foley will draw a card for turn, play it Rogue's Passage as his land for turn, then he's gonna tap for three mana, and he's gonna play Armadillo Cloak onto his Rafik. Yeah. Can you Rogue's Passage? He doesn't need to now, it is I don't need to. <laughs> I can. How do I fucking figure this out right now? I can. Black I came life. up with the answer. Is that life game? It yes. is like Oh, dude, what are you worried about? Bro, now, now you hit. <laughs> what the fuck are you Now you definitely about? hit me. Just yeah. hit him in the face. Boom. What? <laughs> On combat, he's going to try to tap Kumena. I'll use Kumena to draw a card. I have no out, so this kills me. He ends up gaining 30. He shouldn't have. It should have only been 15, as the 15 damage would be enough to kill me. All things said, he just passes to Aiden, who plays Spawning Bed into Impact Tremors. Then he's going to tap some lands and the altar to gain a life and play Mirror Battlesphere, which is going to trigger Tremors and Perforos, bolting everybody. And then he drops four more tokens, bolting everybody four times, killing Jake and bringing Foley down to 30, which should have been 15 because of the life discrepancy earlier. He'll then attack Foley for three and pass the turn. Show us your big, fat, thick draw to hand. Oh, we don't care, you just kill him. Yeah. Just do it. It's Four, unlockable. Rogue passage, it's attack. 30. Holy None shit, none of this matters. <laughs> Great game, shake hands like good boys. Gentle, Not you. Gentle, sir. Gentle, 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 gentle. Give me your hand. Foley wins the game. Here at the end, we want to talk about how everyone's decks kind of performed, and I like to do it in order of who was the least impactful on the game up to who was the most impactful, and that usually equals the person that won the game. Now, as far as who was the least impactful, everyone kind of did their thing in this game. The person that comes to mind is Jake and his Varina build, and the only reason he wasn't as impactful as he could have been was because I cast a new card that was printed in Commander Legends, Hole Breacher. He had set up the Alhamarit's Archive, to work in conjunction with the sacred excavation. No, this is the ancient excavation. That's a different excavation. Point being, he was going to draw a lot of cards, but I happen to have Cavern, Naming Merfolk, flashed in the whole breacher, and that's why this card can be so powerful. Not only did it net me a bunch of mana, but it stopped him from drawing a bunch of cards, which could have very easy, easily led to him pulling ahead in that game. He ended up having a mana crypt later in the game. He was able to generate a lot of mana. He even board wiped. So I wouldn't say that he wasn't a big part of how the game played out. He actually slowed the game down quite a bit, which is part of his deck's game plan. But between the whole breacher and everyone else being pretty aggressive, he wasn't able to hang in the game for too long, but he did hang in the game longer than me. I would say it was the second least impactful maybe that scale is kind of hard to define when we're talking about this particular game because everyone, like I was saying, kind of did their thing. I was on Kumena, and because of my Hull Breacher and the Kiros Follower, I was able to generate a lot of mana really fast. And I did the thing you're kind of not supposed to do in Commander, especially when you're like not playing CDH. So everyone's playing pretty powerful decks, but they're not so powerful that the game ends on turn four. So if you if you do what I did and be a little bit too noisy by generating like 10 mana on turn four, you're gonna get singled out and hit pretty hard by the Voltron deck, which we'll get to in just a moment. I played my whole Breacher, generated a bunch of mana, and I was able to put out the Lull Mage combo, I guess. There's the Lull Mage Mentor, which allows me to tap seven Merfolk by control to counter spells and abilities. I was put into this really weird position in the game around turn five, where Jake decided, okay, I can't handle this board state, it's time to cast Black Sun Zenith for five. I could have countered that with my Lowbange Mentor, and that would have countered the Black Sun Zenith. Foley would have still had Rafik 
and this Rafik could have swung in at me. Some of you might be thinking, oh, you would have had a Merfolk generated from countering it with the Low Mage Mentor. That Rafik deck can generate so many tramplers, well, not so many tramplers, it has so many ways to give the Rafik trample that my 1-1 one -one wasn't gonna block and save me the game at all. My deck did some pretty cool stuff, but unfortunately I was put out of the game, rightfully so. If the turn had gotten back to me, I had that surge banner on top, I would have been able to start bouncing lands and locking everyone out of the game, and you guys would have been stuck watching like a 45 minute game, and who wants to do that? Then we have Aiden. Hi Aiden. He was playing his Perforos deck, which we thought was a Torbrain deck, which was really funny, because when we figured out that, oh, this, this build was supposed to be Perforos, and we switched the commanders, the deck all of a sudden made a ton of sense. There were a lot of cards that didn't make any sense beforehand, and then and now it does. He was able to play his Perforos. He was able to generate 1-1s, he was able to play a Torbrain, he was able to play Impact Tremors. He played spells. Even though there were some play errors, like exiling those tokens, which I don't think would have changed the outcome of the game, thankfully, he dealt a ton of damage. He enabled himself to put Jake out of the game, which we don't really know what Jake had in his hand at that point, but we were at the point in the game where if Jake maybe had another mana source, he could have taken over the game with some type of a board control spell, like a Merciless Eviction. So it was good that we were able to put Jake out so quickly. The only reason Aiden didn't actually win the game was because Foley had an Armadillo Cloak. Foley did the Voltron deck thing, and he singled out a player and started to put commander damage on them, and he was able to wipe me out. He didn't even need to worry about Jake, because Aiden was able to handle Jake pretty easily, and then when the time came to swing with the Armadillo Cloak, no matter how much power Aiden had on board, he had the Rogue's Passage, which grants unblockable. He was able to give Rafik unblockable, swing at Aiden for 30 commander damage, and if it means anything, he gained 30 life too. It doesn't. Foley won the game. It was awesome. This is another... Calvin, have we had a win from Foley besides this one with Rafik? Is this the first Rafik win? In the comments below, if you've been following this channel for a minute, let us know if Foley's ever won on camera with Rafik, because he certainly won with Rafik off of camera, so it's just really cool to see. There will be lists for most of these decks down in the description below. I don't know if we have Rafik's list yet, but we'll be working on that, so even if it's not here, if you're one of the first people to watch a video and you don't see it, drop in the comments that you want to see the Rafik list. We're going to get it together for you. Also, there's some of you people commenting that you want the Bolus list and the Mogus list, and I think the Gavi list. These are all coming actually very shortly. Just keep that in mind. The reason I have responded to you is so when I check our comments on YouTube, <laughs> um, I remember that I have to get you guys li those lists. So keep that in mind. I think that's all I have for you guys today. Um, thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will see you next time. I forgot that it had lifelink, honestly. Fully. So it's gonna be three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, ah! plus three, fifteen, thirty. <laughs> Kay! <laughs> I'm super dead. <laughs> ah!